Well, good morning. Good morning. It is wonderful to see you all. We are blessed to have people joining us on Facebook as well and things. That was Nicole Mullins singing To God Be the Glory, Andrea Crouch made that song famous. And 
We wanted to do it this morning. Um, Scott and Patty would have celebrated their 40th wedding anniversary. That was a song that was at their wedding. It's a beautiful way to start any kind of worship service. And so we just wanted to honor them by doing that this morning as well to get us ready for worship. We had a great, great um, group this morning, early in the service and things. They were up and going and ready to get their Jesus on. And I hope that you are too and things like that. I'm excited that you all are here. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers and uncles and papas and all those special people that are in our life that are blessed. In the way of announcements, um, Wednesday we meet at, on Facebook, six o'clock. Um, we just have kind of um, devotion and just time in the word. I call it word in the word um, Wednesday. And so I hope that you'll be able to join us online if you can and things and to celebrate with us. Also here in the life of the church, don't forget that we have those that are getting ready to head out on, on, on Honduras at the end of the year and they're going to take with them medical supplies and there's a list of those on Facebook there's a list in the back hallway right beside a huge suitcase and our goal is to make that suitcase flow um, to fill to overflowing and things like that all of those items go directly to the people there and simple items uh, maybe Miss Sharon you can point it out to us if you're at the dollar store you can pick up a couple of these things or a lot of these things for a dollar or less and things and so those go directly for the ministry in Honduras as their people get ready to head out in November so it gives us lots of chance to fill suit, that suitcase and then hopefully more suitcases so please be mindful of that if you love to mow if you're one of those people that love you know likes to mow or to make your yard beautiful and things like that we could use your work and we could use your talent and we could use your ministry um, here at the church um, for not only the church um, but also um, the parsonage now that we are mowing and taking care of that lawn and things. So if that's something you'd be interested in, we've got a sign-up sheet out in the vestibule, and I hope that you will sign up for that. We would love to fill that all summer long and things. And also um, security team, if you're a member of the security team, and um, they have some sign-ups there to fill all those spots as well and things to keep us safe while we're worshiping and getting back to it. Thank you for everyone that has signed up and has gone and done and those that are taking care of those that can't be with us and things. Some of our ladies, um, older ladies and things, they're still a little insecure about being here, taking care of their health and making that a priority. We celebrate that with them, but I know that you've been running errands and doing things for them, doctor's appointments. So thank you all for being a church in motion. That is absolutely magnificent. Being Father's Day. Um, after services today, we will um, close the church. We're not going to have any committee meetings and different things like that. Next week, our deacons will meet, and then the week after that, um, our pulpit supply and pulpit search committee um, goes back to being very, very active as we're collecting and things. And so lots of different things going on in the life of the church in the way of birthdays and anniversaries. Wendy Patton has a birthday um, tomorrow and is at home. Um, recuperating and taking care of herself and things like that after surgery. Dawson Birch has a birthday on Friday. Um, Kaylee Vitito has a birthday on Friday and on Saturday Darren Bean has a birthday and then anniversaries um, June is that month. We've got lots of blessings and things like that. Dwayne and Karen um, have an anniversary tomorrow and things like that celebrating with them. Um, Harold and Miss Rothstein have an anniversary. Um, Tony and Pam have one on Wednesday and on Tuesday, Jonathan and Erica have an anniversary. And so thank you all for being beautiful examples of God's love and what a marriage is supposed to be. Thank you for encouraging each and every one of us. And so it is wonderful to see you all and things like that. It's, you know, some people are able to be back with us for the very first time today. And so we're celebrating that as well. This morning we're going to sing. Um, start out with is great is thy faithfulness we're going to do the first and the last verse and then we're going to have here <laughs>
most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this opportunity we have to come into your house, Lord, to sing praises to your name, and just to remember that great faithfulness you had towards us, Lord. We don't always have it towards you, but you are always faithful. You are always quick to forgive. You are always there for us when we need our Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray that you'll be with us this morning through the service, Lord, that you'll pour out your spirit upon us, and that we'll be ready and willing to hear a word for you, the words you've already prepared. Not only to hear it, Lord, but to take it and live it, that you would have us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Pray, dude, this is my Father's world. It's the same. today are Noah and Taryn Madden. This is today in our prayer time. We want to pray for Noah and Taryn Madden. They're students at New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. Yes, that is the one in New Orleans. <laughs> Noah is working on a Master of Divinity degree. Taryn's a Master's degree in counseling. They'll be a great team, well equipped for a lifetime of ministry. And we're supporting them because of our church supports the seminary through our cooperative program giving. That lowers the cost to students and allows them to attend. New Orleans is one of the six Baptist, Southern Baptist seminaries we support in the country. Together they have more than 18,000 students, and that's probably more students than all of the other Christian seminaries in the United States. Um, but there's more. As they study, Noah and Taryn are already helping plan a new church in New Orleans by disciplining young adults coming in faith in Christ. As they graduate, Noah and Taryn will be moving to Boston, serving as missionaries with our North American Mission Board. They'll plan a church to help reach about six million mostly lost people in that area. We'll support them in that ministry also through our cooperative program giving. Let's ask God to bless their studies and their ministry. And let's pray for the New Orleans Seminary. And of course, we have those in New Orleans. And of course, one that's closest to us is Louisville. And scattered across the country. I think we're so blessed to be able to support missions through our cooperative program, and I thank you all for your continued giving of the cooperative program and the support and things like that. But every dollar goes directly to help someone in need and get the word out there about Jesus. There's lots of neat things going on. In the life of the church, um, lots of um, things, things to celebrate and things to pray about. Um, of course, we're always praying for the loss that God um, brings to us, our one, as we call that, and for those opportunities for people that are in our pathway that God brings to us for us to witness to, both in word and action and things. And so continue to remember the loss um, and your witness as we're coming in contact with them. We're praying for our nation uh, and, of course, the leadership of our nation and our state and our local communities and things, praying for godly wisdom for them praying for godly counsel for those that do not know the Lord and that hopefully they can see God in action. I know here at Maceo, um, there's so many of you all that have really stepped up and just continue to do, and thank you all for doing that over and over again. We've been praying for our military. We'll continue to pray for them, of course. Our first responders, we are so lucky and blessed 
not only to have representation here in the church, but also um, within our church family. And so thank you all for your continued prayer, for their safety, and also that God just keeps that hedge of protection around them. Um, we've been praying for Larry Bullock, praying that God continues to just to strengthen his body. Um, Ms. Sarah Cole, we've been praying for. Steve Hall, um, Pat and Suzette were able to be with us. Um, they have been um, with Steve and Susan, and so they were able to be in service today and things, and so we've been praying for Steve. Ms. Ruth Harrison, um, the lady um, who was in the Owensboro Public School System, um, she gained her um, entrance into heaven last night about 11.22. Um, Amanda sent us word that she is now in heaven, and so we're praying for um, her husband, Dick, and their um, sons, um, Steve and Andrew, and then Emily and Megan are her daughters in love. And things. So we're praying for that family this morning, and also for Amanda. Amanda was like an adopted daughter and took care of Miss Ruth and just loved her. And I know that Miss Ruth will continue to live on through Amanda and so many people that she touched, so many teachers that she helped train. I'm um, praying for Miss Betty and things like that for continued healing. Miss Wanda Horn had a birthday, if those of you know we've celebrated, and uh, Miss Ann told us that um, she had a PET scan and is officially cancer free and oh, things like that. Man. So I can praise God for that. Thank you. I'm so excited about that for Miss Wanda. Um, Mr. Gilbert Oliver was moved to Hillcrest this week, and so we want to um, just pray for transition. If you have time to send him a, a card for encouragement, that would be magnificent. We don't have a room number yet. Uh, I didn't get that from Miss Kathy, and so I apologize, but um, just continue to pray for him during this time of transition. Um, Wendy Patton, of course, had surgery a couple of weeks ago. She will be moving to a cast, I believe. She cannot put weight on her foot for another two and a half weeks and things, and so her family have been taking care of her, but continue to pray and things like that. Steve Bridgman asked that we continue to pray for his sister, Dr. Shannon, and things as he's in Texas with her. And Larry Wilson was able to be in service with us this morning. We were super excited to see uh, Mr. Wilson. We haven't seen him for a couple of uh, months and things. He's been taking care of himself as he should be. We've been praying for he and Miss Sheila, so I was excited about that. Um, we've been asked to pray for Miss Rostein and things, just struggling a little bit with her health, and so we promised that we would be praying for her. Also for Carolyn Adams, who had surgery, um, we've been praying for her healing, and then of course Mr. Lindy was in a car accident last week, and so we are praying for them as well. So what other things do we need to be praying about? That's exactly right. Thank you. Things like that this morning. I had a note, and actually it's right here in front of me. It says, please add to your prayer concerns, Kenny. Mm -hmm. Patty takes such good care of me. And things like that. But yes, Ms. Shreda has a knee replacement. Um, we said this morning that she's always up and kicking. Now she just needs a replacement. So um, we're doing that. And then also our um, sister church, Hallsville Baptist, um, has called a man who is doing a trial um, sermon this morning, we're doing two different sermons with them, and they will vote this afternoon, and so this could be the man that God has called them to lead their church. So while I'm reading all these good notes, I think I'll just read them all. I don't know. Megan and Dustin are on their way to Florida. Ooh, Megan and Dustin getting ready to be beach bunnies with the yeah. kids. <laughs> so they're celebrating and things like that. So um, I know we have other people that are traveling this week as well, so it's great for those that are vacationing, not only for their health, but for their safety. My sister-in-law, Hazel Lamunda, is supposed to have a hip replacement Tuesday. Oh, they okay. postponed it a couple of times because of the virus thing. Yeah. But last I heard, it's going to be Tuesday. Okay. So we're praying. Our prayers will get across the pond, things like that. That's serving a God that's everywhere. So praying for Miss Hazel. What else? I know we all have some unspoken things in all of our lives, so let's remember those as well, and ask Brother Tony to come and lead us in prayer. Father God, it's good to be in your house this morning, Lord. We just thank you because uh, uh, you've blessed us in so many ways. We praise you, Lord, because you are truth and you are love, Lord, and you are all those things, Lord God, that uh, that are worthy of praise, Lord. So we just we just thank you, and and we we invite you to be here in a special way through your Holy Spirit this morning, Father God. We thank you for 
the opportunity to celebrate Father's Day, Lord God, and we just ask that you would bless each father in our in our congregation, Lord, each father out there, Lord God, to help us to realize, Lord, our great responsibility within our homes, Lord, and we realize that real men love Jesus, Lord, and not ashamed to call out his name and have him as as the, as the Lord of our lives, Father God, and I pray that we'll, we'll just uh, always be ready to share that hope we have in him. He is the hope of the world, Lord. Mm -hmm. We just thank you, Lord God, that we can uh, bring our requests before you, Lord. You know every need, you know every hurt, Lord. Sometimes, Lord, there are things on our heart that we don't want to express to others, Lord God, but we know that you are the God who will never leave us, the God who will never forsake us, Lord. You care about every need we have. We just uh, bring these needs, Lord, that have been uh, uh, presented, Lord, before you, Lord God, just asking that you would uh, that you would heal, Father God, that you would give comfort and you would give peace, Lord God, and, and Lord God, that you would just uh, be uh, exactly what we need, Lord, in this situation. We, we know you will, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you so much, Lord God, that your word just uh, speaks to us, Lord, and is the strength that we draw from day to day, Father God, and we thank you that your servant, Brother Dennis, Lord God, for the message that he has prepared, Lord God, we know it is exactly what we need this day, Lord God, and it's exactly what you prepared just for this congregation in this hour. And we ask that you would help us to receive it, anoint him, Lord, as he as he delivers that, that message, Father God. Lord, if there are any here, Lord God, this morning, Lord, that don't know you as their Lord and their Savior, Lord, I just pray that they would, this be a day, Lord, that they would uh, they would acknowledge you, Lord, the need for you, that uh, we are all sinners, Lord God, that, uh, that we all need a Savior, and you provide the way for your Son, Jesus. And I lift, just ask that this would be the day that we would make that decision, Father. We just ask that you would uh, uh, be with us there in this hour, Lord. We just invite your Holy Spirit to be here in a special way, Lord. And, we uh, will be able to say when we leave this place, it's been good to be in your house. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. This is normally the time for our offertory. Of course, right now we're not <clears throat> passing plates and things, but we have a plate here at the pulpit and then at both doors that you can drop your offering off and things. And we appreciate all of those and your faithful giving. Um, it just has blessed the church tremendously. Thank you. And then, of course, for those that are on Facebook, Post Office Box 57, Maceo, Kentucky, 42355, for those wanting to mail it in as well. We're going to see Rescue the Perishing, the first and the last, and we turn it over to Miss Sharon, and then turn it over to Dr. Dennis. So, sing with me. In, in uh, uh, Swahili, it's Baba. In uh, Turkish, Swedish, Russian, Norwegian, French, and Dutch, it's Papa. And I would also say in America, some people call it Papa. In, uh, in Italian, it's Babo. 
okay? So a lot of different language, a lot of different names that our fathers are called. But as I was thinking about uh, the children's sermon this morning, I thought about the definition of father. What is the definition of father? It can mean a man who biologically has a child. It could mean someone who began something new, uh, like our country. The father of our country is George Washington, all right? Uh, a father can be one who is a leader. It can be one who is a teacher. Most fathers are teachers, aren't they? You know, I think about my father. My father was a great teacher. He was a good man. And uh, one of the things that my father taught me, uh, you can find in the scripture verses in Philippians 4, verse 12, and it says this, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. My daddy always taught me, whatever situation you find yourself in, be content. My dad had 12 back operations. And um, when he was in the hospital, the nurses would come in and they would say, Mr. Ford, how are you? And with a smile, my daddy would always say, I'm fine. And they'd say, no, you're not fine. We know you're in pain. And then one time a nurse came in and she'd come in several days and dad was always smiling. She said, Mr. Ford, can I ask you a question? And he said, certainly. She said, are you a Christian? You see, they could tell my daddy was a Christian by his attitude, by how he acted. And I just want to throw something else in here. Fathers, you can tell your children a lot of things, but the most important thing is how you live. It's how you live. My daddy, uh, when I was about you know, five years old, he uh, got sick and, and he couldn't drive a truck anymore. So the company that he worked for put him on a, a shift where he would have to work late at night. And one night he was sitting there and he was sitting in the rocking chair and he looked at me and he said, Sharon, come sit in my lap. This may be the last time daddy gets to rock you for a long time because I have to work at night. And I, I remember that from when I was five years old. And you know what that taught me? That taught me love. That taught me the most amazing love. But you know what? Even though uh, maybe you don't have a father like that uh, at home, but guess what? Jesus told his disciples when they asked him how, how they should pray, he said, pray like this, our Father. God is our Father. He's our Father. And when we've got a problem or trouble and we think nobody's listening to us, that's one of the things that teenagers say sometimes, nobody's listening to me. There's somebody listening to you, and that's God, your Father, your good Father. He is the good, good father. I love that song, Brother Dennis. Good, good father. He is a good, good father. And this morning, I want you just to realize that he's got a lot to teach you, and it's found in this book. It's found in this book. And he teaches us the way to live with peace and happiness and joy if we follow our father's advice. All right, let's pray. Father God, it's amazing to be able to call you father. Even though my daddy's not with me, I know that someday I'll see him again and I'll see you again. Because Father God, I love you and I know that Jesus died on the cross for me. And I thank you for that. And God, I pray for our boys and girls as, as they're at home. I pray that Lord, they're listening and, and that if they feel like that they need you in their heart and you're talking to them, you're speaking to them, have them to go to their mama or their daddy and ask them, how do I become a Christian? Lord, I just pray for those that are sick. I pray for those that are, uh, Lord, that uh, have lost loved ones this week. I pray especially for the Harrison family. And Lord, I pray your blessings upon them. I pray for others who are still, uh, Lord, in pain and, and, and just they've, they've lost loved ones and they're having a hard time dealing with it. I pray for them, Father God. And Lord, I just pray this morning for each one of us that our hearts will be open to receive your message as Brother Dennis brings such a, an amazing word from you, Father God. We love you, Lord. And I thank you that I can call you Abba. Amen.
How's everybody this morning? Y'all awake? Yes, some of y'all are. Let's try it again. Y'all awake? Yes. All right. Some of you are. But we're glad that you're here with us this morning. It's a very special day. Uh, dads, it's our day, right? We get a day. Father's Day. And it's our day. Yeah. Let me ask you to go ahead and, and turn in your Bibles that you brought. Uh, we'll be looking at the Ephesians chapter 4 here in just a few moments. And uh, if you didn't bring a Bible, maybe you can turn your Bible on. You may have your Bible app on your phone. I use that every day almost. And so I want to encourage you to do that as well. So we're in Ephesians chapter 4. And we'll be looking at that scripture here in just a few moments. But uh, uh, I do want to recognize the dads that's in the house this morning. If you're a father, would you stand with me this morning and stay st stood up so we can uh, applaud you for being here. Let's give this guy a stay stood, stood up. Uh, thank you so much for being here. There's a lot of places you could, could chose to be, but you're here today in God's house, and we thank you for being here. I want to pray for all the dads that's here today. Let's pray. Father, we again thank you for who you are within our lives. As Miss Sharon said, you are the good, good father for all of us. Father, thank you for the men that are standing here this morning. Ask your blessings upon them, Father, again, that they will be men seeking uh, the things of your heart for them. Help us, Lord, as dads this day to be godly men, to set the examples that our world needs to see. And when they look at us, Lord, that they see you. So I thank you for the men that are here this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, guys, to be seated. We're glad that you're here this morning. Uh, I want to read the, the scripture from the New Living Translation. Maybe a little bit different than your translation of the Bible, but uh, I want to read that with you this morning. The Apostle Paul's giving us some good advice, guys. And by the way, this is a message for everybody, okay? Not just men, but it's Father's Day. So, uh, Dad, this is your message for sure today. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. With the Lord's authority, I say this. Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life that God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity, Paul says. Verse 20, But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from Him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, he says there in verse 23, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. And guys, if we could live a scripture out, it would be this one today, that we are living for Christ, we are His example, and we need to put off the old and, and put on the new. And that's the message that, that Paul's given us as we continue to look at this. I want to share a, a video song with you right now. I heard this song a few years ago and it really touched my heart. And I want you to pay attention to the words of this song. And this is uh, by a group called The Color. And it's The Kind of Man.
you guys, but that's the kind of man I want to be. I'll Amen. tell you what, one that loves his wife and his kids and honors God and the country. Uh, that's the kind of man that God is looking for in our society today, and that sure is the kind of man I want to be. And as we look at the scripture, Paul's given us some guidelines of how to live that life. And again, a big part of this is to put off the old self and put on the new. And, and, and guys, I don't know about you, but man, it's easy to get distracted today. I mean, there's so many voices that come our way. Who are we listening to? And so, so it, it's a challenge uh, for us as dads is to keep our eyes focused upon God and upon God's way and His Word because there's a lot of things that come our way. And uh, so the challenge for us is to be the kind of man that God wants us to be. Uh, man after God's own heart is a challenge for us today. And so as we look at this scripture, Paul has given us again some guidelines of how to live our lives. So Go back with me again to verse 17. It says, With the Lord's authority, I say this, Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopeless, hopelessly confused. You know, uh, again, it's so easy to get confused in our world today with, with all the voices and, and all the things that's been flashing our way on a daily basis. And so living our life for Christ is important. And as you look in the mirror, guys, I want to ask you that question. Who are you living for? Is Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior? Well, you know, preacher, that's that's for sissies. No, it's not. <laughs> it's like like Tony said, real men look for Jesus, okay? And to be able to take a stand for Christ today, sometimes it's not an e easy thing to do in the workplace or at school or wherever we are, but to take a stand for Christ and for who He is and what He's done for us. And so, you know, living the Christian life right now, just doesn't happen. You have to focus. It's, it has to be intentional as, as we're living for Christ, guys. And, and to be in God's Word, that's not going to happen just by just coincidence. No, we have to make it a priority every day, guys, to be in this Word. We have to make it a priority to pray for our wives, for our children, for our grandchildren, pray for others. It's got to be a priority. No one can do that for you. That's right. And so as we think about being godly men, the challenge, again, is to make God a priority. And no one can do that for you as an individual. I like the way the New King James Version puts verse 17. Paul says, This I say, therefore, and testify the Lord, that you should no longer walk, notice the word walk, as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind. You've heard this phrase all your life, talk to talk and walk the walk. Many times we can talk the talk, but can we really walk the walk? In other words, are we really living the way that we say we are? You're a Christian. That's great. Then how you live it, you know? Can, can that be seen in how you live, in your walk, and in your talk? And so the challenge, guys, for us is to be men of God, not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, not ashamed that we, we go to church, not ashamed that we read this word, not ashamed that we love our wives and our children, not ashamed to pray for one another. And so the challenge is before us today to be the man God has called us to be. And you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, Paul says, in the futility of their mind. There was a bunch of preachers gathered around one time and they were arguing over which translation of the Bible was the most important. I can just see a bunch of preachers doing that. <laughs> well, I like this version and I like this version. This version better than that version and let's go on and on. And finally, an older pastor spoke up. He said, you know what? None of those translations are important unless you live them out. That's right. I don't care what translation it is. You got to be living out that translation. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Whether it's New King James, New Living Translation, whatever it is, the key is to live it out, to live out the Word of God. And one author said, the problem isn't knowing what to do, it's doing what we know already. 
True. And there's a lot of truth in that. The problem is knowing what to do as a dad, as a father, is doing what we know to do. And that's a challenge, guys, for us today. And so as we look at verse 17 again, with the Lord's authority, I said this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Sounds like a world today, doesn't it? And many times as you look around, you see so much confusion going on in our society today. And we need to be focused upon God and walk the walk and not just talk the talk. You know, I read the story of a guy that was really positive, and I don't know about you, but I like to be around positive people. I really do, because I, I, I like to rub bad bowls because there's so much negative things out there. I mean, every time it's like you watch the news, it's so negative, negative. There's negative things all around us, isn't there? Shake your hand if you're awake. Yeah. yeah. There's negative things all around us, but I like to be around positive people. I try to be positive. I don't know if my, you might want to ask my wife about that later on. Some days it's good, some days not so good. But then, you know, I try to be positive. And there was this farmer, he, he was really positive, so much so positive that people couldn't believe he was that positive. One year a flood came, and another farmer came to the boat and says, Hey, man, he said, I'm really sorry you lost your chickens. The farmer said, That's no problem. I got a bunch of ducks. No problem. And, 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 and the, the guy on the boat says, Well, listen, man, I, I, I'm really sorry you lost your crops. Old Joe says, That's no big deal. He said, They said it's going to be a bad year for crops anyhow. And so the, the, the guy in the boat said, no, wait a minute. He said, you know, he said, I'm so sorry, Joe. He said, look how high that water is from the flood. It's gotten all the way up on, on your windows. He said, man, that's no problem. They need to be washed anyhow. I mean, this guy was <laughs> positive, wasn't he? In the midst of the flood, he's so positive. I like to be around those people who are positive because there's so many negative things around us. I mean, how much positive news do you ever see on TV? It's like all negative. We need to be positive for the Lord. The challenge is to be positive individuals for Christ. And in verse 17, the American Standard Version says, Walk in the vanity of their mind. Wrong thinking leads to wrong living. And I believe that. Wrong thinking leads to wrong living. You've heard me say it many times since I've been here at your interim. It matters what you put in this old mind. It matters what you think. It matters what you watch. It matters what you listen to. It matters who you hang out with. Young people probably don't want to hear that, but it's true. It matters. It ma all these things matter to be the kind of people that God wants us to be. I heard this saying years ago, garbage in, garbage out. Have you all heard that? Yes, it's been around for a while. And so what we think, guys, is important. What you put in your mind is very, very important. One of the biggest problems in society today, especially even, even with Christian men in the church, is pornography. I mean, it's true. I mean, because, listen, let's face it. We're just a touch away from anything we want to be, right? Just a touch away. You think, well, it's all the young people's got all the problems. They're the, pro they're the problem people. No, I mean, we all have problems. I don't care what age you are. But there's a big problem in our society today with men being addicted to pornography. And so we want to pray for one another. We need to keep our eyes upon Jesus. And that's a part of of living this Christian life as individuals. And so wrong thinking leads to wrong living. And every sin is preceded by a process of wicked thinking. What are you thinking? What goes into your mind? You know those thoughts can quickly become actions very quickly. So be careful guys what you think about. Be careful what you're watching. Be careful what you're looking at. We, and and we, we talk about that as as his dad's looking at our children and grandchildren and making sure we know what they're watching and what they're listening to. But how about us? How about us as, as grown men? What are we thinking and what are we listening to and what are we watching? And so, guys, we've got a tremendous responsibility to be the men that God has called us to be as individuals. And uh, with all the technology out there, again, it can be a, this can be a good thing or bad thing, can it? I think I shared this with you before when, when Facebook and I, I thought Facebook forever had this one lady said you got to get on Facebook I didn't want to get on Facebook I thought it and thought it and thought it and I thought you know if I get on Facebook I'm going to see things on there the church members put on there and I don't want to see what they're putting on there <laughs> and it turned out to be pretty true Tony bro. <laughs> not you all not you all yet <laughs> but I fought it for a long time but you know what well, I came to conclusions you know what that thing's going to be around for a while why not take that and use it for the positive? That's right. 
And, and so I, I started to do that. I, I set me up a Facebook, Miss Sharon. I'm high tech now, man. I got a Facebook. I'm on Facebook. I'm all right. I'm about to rise. <laughs> but, but I tried to use that to be positive. If you go to my Facebook, you'll see a lot of Christian music because I love Christian music. And, and, but I want to use this thing for the positive, not the negative. That's right. Because it's used a lot for the negative, isn't it? Shake your head. We know it is. Yes. But why not use this thing that's going to be around, it's going to be in our pockets, in our, in our purses, and everywhere. We, 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 we're lost without these things, right? So why not use this thing for a positive thing? So I want to encourage you, Dad. You've got the resources. We've got all the technology in the world. Let's use it in a wise way. Be careful what you're listening to. Be careful what you're watching. And you know, one of the things we just think, well, nobody knows what I'm doing. God, your Father knows. God, your Father knows exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And when no one else knows, God knows. And when it comes down to it, we're accountable to Him. One day we will stand face to face to Him for our lives. And so we've got to be careful what we look at and what we listen to. And, and you know, as I, I was shared with the other group this morning about this Greyhound bus driver. Uh, there, there's good news and bad news and everything, right? And, and years ago, the Greyhound bus used to be the big way that you get around. Everybody, anybody here taking a Greyhound bus ride? Oh, most people my age have. Uh, uh, we've been on those Greyhound buses. But the Greyhound bus driver said this to his uh, travelers one day. He said, I've got bad news and I've got good news. He said, uh, the bad news is I have no idea where we are. But the good news is we're making very good time. I mean, and we can look at that way within our lives too, right? There's bad news and good news. Are we putting out good news for Christ? Are we being uh, good news servants for Christ? Our world's on a treadmill. No, it seems like with nowhere to end up. Always confused, as Paul says in our scripture. Look at verse 18. He says, their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. It sounds like Paul is writing to June the 21st, 2020, that we're in right now. We look around us and we see so much confusion, so much darkness, so many things against the things of God's Word in our society today. And, and I don't know when Jesus is coming again. I've been praying, Lord, maybe you need to come today. <laughs> you know, because this world is getting in such a mess. And yet God is still on his throne. I believe he is. Yes. God is still in control in the midst of all the things that's going on in our world. Paul is calling these folks out, man. They, they're, they're full of darkness. They wandered far from the life that God has given them because they closed their minds and hardened their hearts. Guys, don't be that way. Do not close your minds and harden your hearts against the things of God. This needs to be a priority. To be the man that God has called us to be in this world today. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Take a stand for Christ. Yeah, you may get laughed at. You may get called a sissy. Whatever. Oh, that's for women. That's for children. No, no. God's word is for everybody. And that's, that's well, men. Take a stand for Christ and don't be ashamed of taking that stand for Jesus Christ. Dads, it does matter what you believe, it does matter what you think, and it does matter how you live, regardless of the, what the world says around you. It makes a difference. And so we see so much darkness around us. It seems like our world is consumed with darkness. We've just seen in the last few weeks all of the hatred and, and the, the nonsense has taken place and, you know, just the, the terrible things that's taken place within our society Today, the senseless killings has been taking place in our society. We need Jesus more than ever. Amen. We need Jesus more than ever. I had a privilege this week to meet with about 12 pastors, and one of them is a good friend of mine, African-American pastor in Owensboro, Brother Andre Bradley, pastor of Mount Calvary Church. Known him for years, came and did a revival for us when there's a heat memorial, just a good friend of ours. And we got together this past Monday and we're beginning to pray and, and here's the question that we're asking. What is the role of the local church in our society today? I mean, with all of the crimes and all the hatred that's going on, what is the role of the church to be a peacemaker? Especially with the race issue that's taking place all over the world, even here in our community. And so, uh, continue to pray for us pastors. We're getting together in a few more weeks and we're going to say, okay, what, 
What can we do to bring about peace within our community? That's a good thing, isn't it? Shake your head. It's a good thing. Yes. We're supposed to be peacemakers with one another, and so pray about that as we come together and work on that issue of being peacemakers within our community. It's important how we walk, guys. It's important how we live. He says, their minds are full of darkness. They've wandered far from the life that God gives them because they've closed their minds, Paul says, and they've hardened their hearts against Christ. We need to open our hearts and minds to Christ this day. Dads, be aware of how you're living. Don't give in to Satan's temptations. Those temptations, if it's just a thought, can very easily go into an action that turns into sin just like that. Be careful, guys, how you live. Don't give in to Satan's temptations. You don't want your eyes to be blinded. And you don't want your hearts to be hardened. We've got to live for Christ and live for him this day. It's very important, guys, for us to do that. Verse 19, they have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. That sounds like today. Like Paul was writing this to, to this year of 2020. The things that he's saying here in this text sounds like today. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. I told my wife we're going to have to get rid of the television. You can't even watch a commercial anymore. I mean, there's so much filth. Even the commercials, I think, oh my gosh. They're putting that in a commercial? That, those things used to embarrass us and, and bring shame. Oh, you know, it's just, it, the world is just, it, it's just gone crazy on stuff. And the things that used to bring guilt and shame to us, there it is, right on TV, it's no problem. It's just like, okay, there it is. And, and can you imagine what that's doing for our children and grandchildren? So they're growing up in the society that things that used to shame us, it's no big deal now. No big deal now. Right there, just on television, it must be okay. Dad, we've got a tremendous responsibility in the home to teach our kids and our grandkids what's right and what's wrong. Let them know those things are wrong. We don't watch that. We don't listen to that. We don't talk that way. You know? If we don't take that responsibility to teach them and love them, who is going to do it? Who's going to do that? They have no sense of shame, Paul says. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. Man, that sounds so much like the world today. The things that used to make us blush. Not anymore. Right there it is on TV. We're living in a sin-sick world, aren't we, church? And more than ever, we need Jesus Christ. So dads, you've got a tremendous responsibility to be the dad at home. Love your wife. Love your kids. And by the way, as I've already mentioned this little thing, I'll pull it out again. Dad, you have any idea what your kids and grandkids are looking at on this thing? Any idea at all? Well, you know, we don't want to we don't want to invade their privacy. Really? Mm -hmm. Who's the dad who's who's the head of the home? That's right. I mean, if we're not monitoring that, who is? And again, man, we're just a touch away. We can see anything we want to see, just a click of a button right here. And, and I know kids and young people here today, you don't mind you, 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 you don't need to be looking at my phone. Wait, were you ashamed of something? You know? When I was growing up, we didn't have these things, you know? We didn't have anything called phone or Facebook or whatever. And so, Dad, you got a tremendous responsibility to be the dad at home. And the kids may not like it, but trust me, in the long run, they're going to love you and respect you for it. Exactly. They really are. And because I remember growing up, and I have three brothers and three sisters, and, uh, Smartest and best looking of them all. But anyhow, no, you're just kidding about that. See if y'all awake this morning. But, but mom and dad, I'm telling you what, they had their switches and their belts and they kept us under control pretty well. And uh, what they said went. And guess what? There was no back talking. Hmm. If, you, if, if, you, if you back talk mom and dad, you're in big trouble, okay? And so I know it's a different world. I know it's a very different world. But, but I, when I think of Leo McFadden, he taught me a lot of things. He taught me respect for myself and respect for other people and other people's property. Where's that at today, right? Are we teaching that to our children and grandchildren to respect other things and other people's property? Dad taught, taught me respect and taught me love. He taught me more than anything is how to work hard. I mean, he worked on the railroad 
for 30 some odd years, night shift, we lived on the farm, he came home and he'd work in the farm, take care of the animals and all that kind of stuff in the daytime. He modeled what it meant to work hard, so I didn't have any choice when I grew up. I worked hard. And you know what? I'm proud that I did now. I'm proud that I did now. And I'm so thankful of the things that I learned of Leo McFadden. I had, to, I had the privilege of baptizing my daddy a few years ago at Sargo Baptist. I know he's in heaven, not because of his baptism, because he loved Jesus. And he got baptized because he did love Jesus. And so I had the privilege of baptizing Leo McFadden. And I'm, you know, you know I'm, as grown up, we don't want to be like our parents. We don't have anything to do with our parents. Uh, they didn't know anything. And I'm thinking, boy, they're pretty smart now, you know. Leo and Gordon McFadden, uh, I think Dad only had like a sixth or seventh grade education. He was a smart man, you know. And so as, as we get older, we, we begin to appreciate things more. And, and I know that I do so much that I've learned from, from my parents. And uh, I've got a cousin that says I begin to look like them too. And I'm looking around. There they are. There's Leo and Goldie McFadden in the mirror. And people you don't want to look like you look like, okay? I was at somewhere that, uh, several years ago and a cousin goes, Oh my gosh, Dennis. She said, You look so much like your dad. I said, I don't either. She said, Yes, you do. <laughs> so I guess I do. <laughs> Parents uh, are important. Dads, you're important. You're so important within the home. And and maybe perhaps during this coronavirus thing, you've been able to spend more time at home and with kids and grandkids. Hope we've taken advantage of that if you've been able to do that. Because listen, we've got a tremendous role within the home, dads. A tremendous role within the church. We need dads to step up. And many of you are doing that. Thank you again for being here today and trying to set the example. Verse 20, Paul says, that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you've heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him. Our role model, our goal is to be like Jesus. We are to imitate the lifestyle of Jesus. And to be his heart, his hands, and his voice. To love others. To forgive others. To have compassion for others. You know, to respect others. All those things we see from God's word and through Jesus' life himself. What a tremendous responsibility. And then there's the call of this newness in Christ. Verse 22. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception, Paul says. Verse 23. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Very simple message here, guys. If we would just live out verse 23 and 24, we'd be a different man. Put off the old, put on the new. Get rid of the old stuff, put on the new. I'm so thankful that God changed my life and I'm not the same Dennis McFadden that I used to be. You know, as a teenager, a junior in high school, I came to know the Lord. And one of the terrible habits I had was cussing. Almost every word that came out of my mouth was a cuss word. You know what? God changed that. I had a roommate in college, and God, those two together, man, it, it, th that habit's gone. God changes us from the inside out, and he's still in the business of doing that. I'm so thankful that I'm not the same person that I used to be, but also I know this, that God's not done with me yet, and I'm still pressing toward the goal like Paul says. He's not done with me yet. I'm not perfect, and I'm not going to be perfect upon this earth, but I'm striving to keep my eyes upon Jesus. Guys, let, let me encourage you this morning. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. Being a godly man in today's society takes guts. It really does. To take a stand for Christ today in this world in 2020, it takes a lot of guts. But I want to call us and challenge us to do that today, guys. Sometimes we forget what our lifestyle used to be like before we came to know Christ. The Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 5, very quickly. He says, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. This is Ephesians 2, 1 through 5. You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God, Paul says. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. 
By our very nature, Paul says, we were, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God in his rich, is rich in his mercy. He loved us so much that even though we were dead because of sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you, were, that you have been saved. Guys, let me tell you very quickly in closing. The most important thing you can ever do is give your life to Jesus. The most important thing you'll ever do. You want to leave a legacy behind? You want people to remember who you were? Live for Christ. Let others see Christ in you. And let your, your children and your grandchildren come and see that lifestyle and want to know Christ because of you. They want to give their life to Christ because of you. They want to read God's Word because they see you in God's Word. They want to pray because they know that you're a praying man. That's the kind of man I want to be. Have I been successful? Probably in some ways and maybe not in others because I haven't been the perfect dad. I'm trying to, again, to be more like Christ every single day. And so, dads, I want to call you this morning to be the man that God wants you to be. Like the song says, it says, Lord, I make me a man who loves his kids and loves his wife. Lord, make me a man who always stands for what is right, who's strong enough to fight a war by falling on his knees, because that's the kind of man, that's the kind of man I want to be. And one of the verses says, slow to speak and quick to listen. That's a good thing in the guys. Slow to speak and quick to listen. Doesn't fear and doesn't boast. Full of faith, full of joy, always looking on to hope. Faithful through the darkness, even when the night is long, knowing this is where you show that you're strong. Lord, make me a man who loves his kids and loves his wife. And then the last part of that, the very last thing that you saw on that song, and when my life is over, and across the crystal sea, that the ones I leave behind me say, they saw you in me. Isn't that a great testimony? When my life is over and I cross the crystal sea, that the ones I leave behind me say, Lord, they saw you in me. Lord, make me a man who loves his kids and loves his wife. Lord, make me a man who always stands for what is right, strong enough to fight a war by falling on his knees, because that's the kind of man, that's the kind of man that I want to be. Would you pray with me this morning? Father God, thank you again for this word that you've given to us today. Uh, Apostle Paul has given us here in Ephesians to live a life that is worthy in your sight. Father, to keep our, our minds and our hearts and everything about us focused upon you and your word and your way. Lord, we need that personal relationship with you. So many voices coming our way and so many demands today just to be a dad, just to be a person. God, we need your help. You've given us this task of being daddies and fathers, and man, it's hard. It's not an easy job. God, we need your help because you're the good father, and we need your direction, and we need your guidance. We need your examples, and you give us that in your word. Lord, help us again to be men after your heart. When it's all said and done, they see you in us, in our words, in our actions, in our walk, in our talk. Of all the decisions that we make in this world, Lord, what we do with you matters the most. So, Father, I'm praying today if there's someone here in this congregation or even somebody that may be watching by Facebook this morning that's never said yes to you. May today be the day of salvation for them. Perhaps there's a man in this room or that's watching by Facebook today that needs to recommit, re rededicate his life to you, Lord. As we look in the mirror, we know we've perhaps not done what we should do as far as being the spiritual leaders in the home. Father, forgive us, but help us to do better. Maybe there's someone here this morning just comes wants to come for a moment of prayer or looking to join this church or Whatever decisions need to be made. Maybe there's someone here, Lord, that accepted you, but not, never followed you in baptism. Whatever decisions need to be made, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would lead and guide. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm going to be here at the front to counsel with you in any way. We've got some places set up in the fellowship hall for counseling as well, so you can either come here or go back there and have some time as well as we stand and sing. Brother, can you come as we have our closing? You'd stand, please. Thank you.